Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is an F statistic? To answer this question, let's start the conversation by going to the whiteboard. All right, here we are at the whiteboard. I'm going to review some other tests we've discussed uh, before we get in the F test. So we're going to review in summary what the Z test is, the T test is. Once we go over that, we'll discuss the F test. So starting with the Z test, the Z test, the Z test is a test of averages. Okay, averages. In other words, we use the Z test to determine if the average changes. So maybe we're going along in time here and we're wondering if our process changes over time that the average changes. And so we could use the Z statistic and it would tell us whether the average change, if the average changed enough to make it statistically significant or not. That's what the Z test is, test of averages. And it does not take into account sampling error. That's what makes the Z-test unique. It does not take into account sampling error. And you can ignore sampling error if your sample sizes are large enough. So what's that key sample size? The key sample size is this. If n is greater than or equal to 30, you can use the Z-statistic to test to see if the average changed. And of course, we have two values that come out of the test. We have a p-value and an alpha risk, which is usually 5%, by the way, usually 5%. And if our p-value is less than our alpha risk, it's statistically significant. If the p-value is greater than the alpha risk, it's statistically insignificant. So, for example, we could go the p-value, let's say, equals 60%. And the alpha risk equals 5. This is the risk we're willing to take. This is the actual risk. I'm not willing to take 60% risk. So we say that this difference in the averages would be statistically insignificant. There you go. Statistically insignificant. Now, if this uh, p-value was, let's say, uh, 2%. Oh, the p-value, the actual risk of saying the averages are different and being wrong is a 2% chance. I'm willing to take a 5%. So this becomes statistically significant. I know we've discussed that before, but I just wanted to go over it uh, briefly as a summary. Now, what is the t-test then? Okay, the t-test is a little different, but not much. It's very similar to the z-test, except, except what? It's used for smaller sample sizes. The t-test does take into account sampling error. Let me say that again. The t-test does take into account, sam in account sampling error. Uh, but it is a test for the averages, just like the z is. So the big difference between the z and the t, the t takes into account sampling error, and the z does not. Now, if you have sample sizes less than 30, that's when you want to use the t-test. If you looked at the mathematical formulas, they look almost identical. Uh, so again, the only difference here is the t-test is an average test, just like the z-test, but it takes into account sampling error. The z-test does not. All right, with that being a summary, now we need another test. First thing you have to understand, though, is uh, we can describe the complete normal distribution with just two numbers. What are those two numbers? If you give me the average and the standard deviation, those are the only two things I need to know to completely understand the normal distribution. So remember, the T and Z test to see if there's a change in the average. T and Z. T, of course, take in, takes into account sampling error. Z does not. But now we need another test. We need a test to determine if the standard deviation changes. Okay, the standard deviation changes. Okay, that becomes the F statistic. The F statistic is unique in that it tests to see if the standard deviation changes. In fact, I never run a T and Z test without also running the F statistic. Why? 
because if I'm interested if something changes, I want to know if any part of the distribution changes, which includes the average and the standard deviation. Remember, that's the only two numbers it takes to describe the normal distribution. So the F statistic is used to check for standard deviations, and the T and Z are used to test for a change in averages. Once you become good at both of those, then uh, you're becoming uh, pretty educated at statistics in that you can do inference studies on both of those parameters that describe the normal distribution. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint and discuss this in a little more detail. All right, here we are back at the PowerPoint, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about this F statistic. So I already went to the computer and I put these numbers in, and of course I have a 5% alpha risk, and I did the p-value, and the p-value came back way greater than 5%. So as a result, I can say the difference between these standard deviations is statistically insignificant. Now, just so you know, I did the same thing with the t-test. When I did the t-test, the p-value was below the alpha risk, which means the t-value said that it was statistically significant difference. What does that tell me? The t statistic says it's statistically significant difference. That F test says it's not. Well, what that means is that the averages shift. They shifted enough to make it statistically significant. But the width of the distribution, when it shifted, it didn't shift enough to where it could show that the standard deviation changed. And so that's what it means. The average uh, of the mileage to failure changed. The standard deviation did not. They're two great uh, inference studies, and they should be used uh, together in compa as a companion, in my opinion. Again, I always run the F test when I run the T or Z. Again, why? Because now I've looked at everything in the distribution. I know if this change impacted one or both of those things. Very important to understand. All right, congratulations. You're about finished with this uh, short video. Hopefully you learned something new that will help you out in your job. Remember to keep us in mind for all of your ASQ certification needs. We have many ASQ certification preparation classes that can help you. And here's a, a lot of them right here. I have a website for each one. Uh, for, so for CQE, it's www.asqcqe.com. And you can go there and there's a website that tells you more about that class and all these others. You can take a screenshot or take a photo with your camera or whatever if you were interested in any of these and you can go look into those classes. And uh, we also have our main website www.alphatc.com. When you go there you can go to videos and select the class of interest and it will also take you to this website. So however you decide to get there, but I'd sure be honored if you would uh, let me join you on your ASQ certification journey. All right, thank you. Hope you have a great day. Please uh, like this video if it was helpful at all. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.